Movers, what up? My movers, where we at? Movers, what up? Where my movers at? What's up to all my movers in the building? Seven o'clock. We know what we do every Wednesday. It's that power move maker hour. As y'all can see, I'm on the road. This is the real on the move edition of the power move maker hour. Out here making moves. But we good. God willing, my lighting is right. God willing, y'all can see me. I'm going to try to keep my eye on this road as much as I possibly can. And we have a good night tonight. How everybody doing tonight? Damn. Movers. We in the building. Yo, for anybody, make sure y'all go out there tonight. I mean, um, go out there and um, we putting up the best of 2020. All of our hottest interview clips from 2020. We putting them up. This week we had some incredible interviews that we did during 2020. Master P went up. Um, Dia Sims. We got an interview with her. We put a clip up yesterday. Today, Funk Flex. All of them dropping so much wisdom, dropping so much knowledge. So, please, if you haven't seen those four interviews, head on over to YouTube. Check them out in their entirety. Head on over to iTunes, um, Spotify, any place where you can stream these podcasts. A lot of wisdom, a lot of jewels being dropped. So, you know, y'all going to see a lot of these amazing, amazing interviews that we've done. And we're going to be, for the next two weeks, just bringing them back to y'all because it's such great content. Who we got in the building tonight? Who I see? I see my man TC Unleashed as always. TC, what up? Who else we got in the building? And we'll get started. And y'all know how I do. Wednesday night, it's a community thing. This is where we answer the questions. It's where we have open dialogue. This is about unfiltered, raw, real talk for anybody who's trying to make moves. So if you a mover, this is your night. This is not a Sean Prez night. This is for us. So get ready, ask your questions, whatever I can't ask, answer. You know, I'll turn it over to somebody in the floor. Hopefully I'll be able to answer. But for anything else, I like to bring you guys into the conversation. So anything you're working on, you're looking for some insight, looking for some wisdom. You just want to tell an inspirational story. You want to talk about a win you got this week. This is where we do it at. Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. Monday nights, y'all know it's the Power Move Minute. And that's Monday night, 7 p.m. And for any interviews that y'all haven't caught, please go ahead and check it out um, on YouTube the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or any of them streaming platforms. I'll give it another minute before we really open this thing up to everybody and then we'll just take it from there. So, <clears throat> again, I don't like to waste time on Wednesdays. To me, this is y'all night. I'm just here to really facilitate a conversation for all my movers out there. So, please... Please be prepared to jump in the conversation and we'll take it from there. Let's see who we got on the line tonight. What we looking like? What we got? Hopefully this IG connection is working. Oh, my man Jose. Jose, what up? What up, what up, what up, man? What's going on? Yo, Jose Inspires on the line. 
Yo, it's good to have yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, move make an hour. You a real mover, brother. My set the swap that. Good looking out, man. I'm I'm honored to be on with you, brother. Now nah, I'm honored to have you on. Your first and foremost. I don't know if you made it to any of our Wednesday night lives yet, Jose. But you know, on Wednesday night, I really try to give back to the movers out there. It's not about showing press. It's about the audience. So anybody out there who's making moves, who's doing their things, if they need encouragement, if they got any questions that they need answered, this is where they step into the platform. So for anybody who doesn't know you, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah, man, absolutely. My name is Jose Flores. As you can see, the mindset is roughed up. And um, I'm an international speaker. My uh, global motivator and uh, number one best-selling author, consultant, personal results coach. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to inspire the world, make moves, and, 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 and open businesses, and make, and make money, man, and pay it forward. My man, my man. You know, Jose, you have an incredible story. I know your story personally, and I, I would love if you could for you to just share your story with our audience because you are a classic example of somebody who has not let any obstacle on planet earth get in the way of you doing your thing you just talked about you being this international speaker you're also an author best-selling author you know you got so much going on but you know behind the scenes people don't know that there's a lot of things that you know have been in your way They've been obstacles, adversities that you've overcome. So can you speak to that a little bit, a little bit about your journey? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I was, you know, I'm from the born and raised in the Bronx, New York, boogie down, right? I saw somebody put BX, BX stand up. <laughs> That's the stuff. And, um, you know, I had a great childhood, but I was born with a neuromuscular condition called spinal muscular atrophy. And basically what that does, Sean, and you know it, but for those that are watching, is that the older I get, the weaker my muscles get. And so the doctors, I said that by the age of 15, I would end up in a wheelchair, and they weren't even expecting me to live past my teenage years. But I have good news for everybody because uh, this year I celebrated my 43rd birthday, brother. Oh, man. So, it's amazing. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when I, when I got into high school, that was when – I really started feeling the change in my body, the shifting uh, and decreased mobility. It just started to become very difficult for me to just do basic life, you know, uh, movements like getting dressed in the morning, pulling my pants up, getting in and out of the bed, going up and down the stairs, sitting and standing, you know, from a seated position. Uh, and, 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 you know, just a lot of my mobility started to decrease. And that's when my mindset started going, you know, haywire right i was like upset with the world i was mad at god i was mad at at, at everyone and every and, and and everything because i felt like i was never really given a ch given a chance a fair chance at life because i was born like this and so i was angry i was upset you know i was frustrated and i went on for several years with that type of mindset and uh it kept me stuck man you know and looking hindsight right they say that hindsight is 2020 and i look back at, at, at everything that i've gone through and everything that i've been through and everything that I've overcome. And, and I know that, you know, for those of you that are watching, you know, I know 2020, is that's been like a gut punch for a lot of people, right? It, it took the wind out of a lot of people. And uh, we, nobody was expecting it. And a lot of people lost jobs, lost family members, uh, lost loved ones, lost income, lost their livelihood, man, right? And so when you think about that alone, 2020 was a tough year, but this is the best year I want to tell you guys that are watching, this is the perfect setup for you to overcome and become the person that you've always wanted to become, to start that business that you always wanted to start, to write that book that you always wanted to write, to make those connections that you always wanted to make. This is the perfect year for you to step up to, step up to the plate and start swinging for the fences, man. This is the perfect setup for that because in adversity and in, 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 in obstacles, there's always opportunities. There's always opportunities. I saw something on Facebook today. Somebody put, what's the difference between an opportunity and an obstacle? I said, nothing. You got to take advantage of both of them. Ooh, that's great advice. <laughs> that's great advice. And, 
And that's how I learned to live, you know? I had to overcome my stinking thinking. I had to, you know, get rid of that old mindset, that old way, that old ways of thinking that wasn't getting me anywhere, that wasn't doing anything for me, that wasn't serving me or serving anyone else around me. So I had to start to make changes and make uh, decisions in my life that was going to start pointing me in the right direction. And I'll tell you, man, once I made that decision, Sean, my life has never looked the same again. And, and for those of you that are watching, you can see. I'm going to back up a little bit just so you can see. You know, I'm in a wheelchair. I got to live this life every day. I got to wake up and look at an obstacle every single day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's I, I don't look at it as a problem. I look at it as an opportunity for me to get into this chair and live my best life right now. Show up for life every single day and inspire somebody, motivate somebody, encourage somebody, give somebody a word that, that may be feeling down and out, right? I know that people need a word right now in 2020. You know what I'm saying? My book that I wrote made the, the Forbes Forbes top 20 books to read this summer in 2020 during COVID. That's amazing. The title of the book, the title of the book is called Don't Let Your Struggle Become Your Standard. I wrote that book two years ago. Who would have known that two years later, the entire planet would be going through a struggle? And I wrote a book called Don't Let Your Struggle Become Your Standard because I wanted to show people, uh, not because of COVID, obviously I wrote this two years ago, but I wanted to show people that we're all going to go through struggles. And it's not just, it's not about the struggle that we're going through. It's how we're going to push through it and get over it and overcome it and get to the other side. You know, you got an incredibly inspiring story. And you said at some point you made this decision to change your mindset. Was this something in particular for you? Because right now, there's somebody out there, you know this just as well as I know it. Their business is shut down. They lost a job. They might have been working in a certain position for many years, and they got demoted. The company didn't want to let them go. But look, we can't afford to pay you like we used to pay you. What was it for you that finally made you change your mindset? And what is something you can tell somebody like, look, because changing your mindset, it's as simple as making a choice. It's as simple as looking at life through a different lens. So is there That's anything right. you can share just from the process you went through that maybe can help somebody else? Yeah, man, I'm going to be 100 with you, man. Like, everybody gets to their breaking point. Everybody gets to a point where they get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I'm going to be real with you, Sean. I was collecting disability. I was getting $850 a month. And I was thinking to myself, how the heck can anybody live off of a measly $850 a month? And I said, I got to do something about this. This isn't acceptable to me. I can't continue to live my whole, I was 20 years old. I didn't end up in a wheelchair until I was 22. So up until I was 22, and I, that's when I lost my ability to walk, I was collecting, I think, for another year after that. So at 23, I stopped collecting and I went out into the workforce and got a job in corporate America. And I worked in corporate America for 20 years. So I want to I wanna let those listeners that are watching know that, you got to get to a place where you where you get so uncomfortable being uncomfortable that you're forced to stretch outside of your comfort zone. And for me, I didn't think that I was good at doing anything else other than a desk job. That's why I went to corporate America. And so I and I and 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 not that there's nothing wrong with it. I love corporate America. They treated me very well for the last 20 years, but I was stuck there because I thought that that's what, that's all I was going to be good at doing. Mm -hmm. And again, it was because I was, I was living with those limiting beliefs. I was already disqualifying myself from opportunities and other jobs and other careers because of my mindset was telling me that you in a wheelchair, nobody's going to hire you. You in a wheelchair, people are going to think you're stupid or you're dumb or you're incapable or you're insignificant. And so that's what I let that type of uh, pollution infiltrate my mind and it kept me stuck for so many years. And then I was in corporate America, and I was with them for 20 years. And, and again, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, three years ago, the job I was with for seven years, they laid me off. They did a big layoff. They laid off about 25 people. I was one of the 25 people, and I was making good money in corporate America. I had worked my way from the bottom up to manager position, and I was making decent money. 
and they laid me off and it was unexpected. But at that point, I had already started developing myself. Like I would say two years prior to that, I had already started looking into motivational speaking and I was writing my book and I got a mentor and a coach. Now, you know, growing up in the Bronx, there's not a whole lot of mentors and coaches out there, <laughs> right? So when I was younger, I didn't have a mentor or coach. So when I understood what that meant and what that really, you know, the, what the power of that can, you know, the power of having a mentor can really do for you, I sought out a mentor and I got one of the best in the industry. And it was the great Les Brown, right? We all know who Les Brown is. If you don't know who he is, YouTube him. I'm telling you, it'll change your life just like it's changed my life. And he was my mentor without me even meeting him in person. That's the beautiful thing about technology is that you can have a mentor that you don't have to per, per se see face to face or be able to jump on the phone call with. You can follow them on social media, YouTube, watch their videos, you know, go to their website. Uh, and if you have the resources and the capability to invest in any of their programs or courses, then go ahead and do so. Because if, if you're not willing to invest in yourself, why would anyone else want to invest in you, right? Absolutely. And so I just want to sh I wanted to share that whole little journey because I went from disqualifying myself, thinking that I was never going to be able to amount to anything great in life, to working in corporate America for 20 years and staying stuck there because even though I liked doing that, I still didn't feel 100% fulfilled because I knew that there was something deep down inside of me that I can, that, that, that there was more that I can be doing than just that. I just didn't know how to figure it out. I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know what it was until I finally figured it out that I might not be able to use my legs and my arms the way that I want to, but I have a powerful mind and I have a powerful voice. And I said, I'm going to maximize that to the maximum capacity and I'm going to become the best to do it. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that, are, that, that, that think they're the best, right? And that's great. They may be the best, but I have to tell myself that because in order for me to be the best, I have to think that I'm the best no matter what's out there. And so that's, what I, that's the choice that I made. And so I, I'm not afraid to stand up to any of the greats. I'll stand up toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and I'll go at it because I know who I am now. See, before I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what my purpose was. I didn't know what my calling was. So I'm so confident in who I am now that I can stand with the greats, and I can, and I can sit at the table with them, not because I asked them to, but because I worked my way towards sitting at the table. You talking that talk, man. You talking that... Like, that's that old Sean Prez talk, right? <laughs> yeah, but before I let you go, and, and, and thank you so much, because you're dropping some real, real gems. Uh, you know, we're speaking from a business standpoint. You said you lost the youth of your limbs at what age? 20, 21? I lost the ability to walk at 22. I still can feel everything and I can still move everything, but it's just atrophy, which means weakened. So I don't have a lot of mobility and I don't have a lot of strength. Okay, I want to bring something into the conversation really quick before you um, check out. There's somebody, you know, who would look at you and they're inspired by you, obviously. You have, have, have done things, you, you, you have wrote now two books. Um, you've done, th you, you spoke in front of thousands. You've done things that a lot of people haven't done. But there's a certain level of confidence that many people just don't have. And obviously, I, I know certain things about you, but I want to I bring it up because I want the audience to understand. When, when, when you lost the, the use of your limbs, you weren't even married at the time. You didn't have kids at the time. Can you just speak to that? Because I think it's incredible, especially how you and your wife are connected at the hip and, and how she is such an amazing support system for you and how you have these healthy boys. So just speak to somebody out there who has these limited beliefs because maybe they're going through something and they're like, yo, forget me becoming a millionaire. I just want somebody to love me. I just want to be in love. And you have the whole package, but it ain't like it happened before your health started to go bad. Yeah, man, that's that's an amazing point that you just pointed out there, man, because that was my main dream in life, man. Like you said, I didn't want to, I wasn't looking to be a millionaire or, or, or have the fancy house and all of that. I was always wondering if a woman was ever going to love me like this. 
because I was broken, man. I felt broken. And by look by the looks of me, if you look at me from the outside looking at me, I look broken, right? I'm in a wheelchair. I can't really move. So I, I look like, I felt like damaged goods, man. And so my main dream was like, is a woman going to actually love me like this? And I say this all the time, and that's why I give my wife the most props, man, and I honor her everywhere I go, and I thank you for bringing her up because there's not a lot of women, let's be honest, there's not a lot of women <laughs> standing in line saying, sign me up, I want to be with a guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that's, just, that's just reality, you know what I mean? But I thank God every day, man, because my wife met me in a wheelchair, and she fell in love with me in a wheelchair, and, 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 you know, she'll tell everybody, she was like, man, he just had that New York swag to him that I fell in love with. Because she's born and raised in Miami. So when I came down with that New York swag, you know, she didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> she's looking at me now like, you crazy. <laughs> but, but, you know, you know, she, she, we worked together. We actually, I met her at, at our Flip in America job. We worked together for 10 years. And, you know, we just became really good friends. And we just finished writing a book together called What Real Love Looks Like. We just celebrated our 13th year of marriage. And we've been together for 20 years. We got two boys, two young men now. They're both out the house, 19 and 20. And they're both healthy. My oldest son is 5'11". My youngest son is 6'1". Uh, both athletic. And, you know, it takes a team. It takes teamwork to make the dream work, man. So, you know, if I, if, if, you know, if I die today, man, I die a happy man because... I'm living my dream, man. And I have a beautiful wife, two amazing young boys. I'm, I'm a successful entrepreneur. And I didn't let my condition become my conclusion. That's what I want somebody to grab if you're listening to this. I don't want you to let your condition, no matter what it is. I have a physical wheelchair, but maybe your wheelchair looks like depression or anxiety or low self-esteem or low income or poverty environment or poverty mentality. Whatever the condition is, I want you to know that that does not have to be your final conclusion. And I'm speaking from experience. Obviously, I'm a testament to that. You know, I wasn't born in, the, in, in, in a perfect environment. My parents divorced when I was two. My dad died when I was 10. And then I lose my ability to walk when I'm 22. So if you talk about the perfect formula to throw the towel in, man, I don't think there's a more perfect formula than that. And, and on top of all that, I'm still here pushing through every single day, man. And let me, I'm going to just be authentic and transparent. There's days, man, that I have my days. There's days where I'm not 100%. There's days where I'm not motivated. There's days that I'm not inspired. But I've understood that I can't let those days become weeks and then months and then years. They have to only be days, one or two, three days the most, and then you got to snap out of it because life isn't going to stop for you and your pity party. You got to keep on moving forward. You can't let your struggle become your standard. And a lot of people, what happens is, is the problem is, is that they let their struggles become their standard and they wind up settling for what life gives them. But I made a choice and I said, I'm not going to settle for what life has given me. I'm going to take these cards that I've been dealt and I'm going to play them to the best of my ability. And I came out winning, baby. <laughs> yo, I love it. I love it. I'm sitting on the other end of this and I'm like, yo, talk that talk, Jose. You got me amped. Yo, somebody said in the comments, you got to get me on a Vlad interview, bro. What's good? Who, who, you? Yeah, somebody said in the comments, you got to get Let's on a Vlad interview. Let's do it. Put me down, B. I'm on. All right, I'll hit you offline, kid. Yeah, what? man, I appreciate you, man. God bless you, my brother. Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on making those power moves, man. I watch, I'm watching you. I'm seeing you. I'm super proud of you, my brother, and I support you. And if there's anything I can do to continue to support you, you already know, man, hit me on the cell, and I'll show up for you, baby. Thank you, kid. And that goes both ways. Let's keep lifting each other up. I love you. Tell your wife I said hi, and we're, and we're definitely kicking. I know, you, I know you're doing the whole Disney World thing, so enjoy yourself. Thank you, my man. Merry Christmas to you and your, and your wifey, too, and the fam. Be good, brother. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care. Your shouts to my man, Jose Inspires. Please go and follow him, Jose Inspires. He is no joke, an incredible motivational speaker. Again, guys, this is y'all's night. I love to open the floor up on Wednesday nights. If you have any questions, if, you, if, you, if you're going through something, if you're getting stuck in terms of your business, this is where you can come and you can ask your questions. 
It's, it's a safe place. It's no such thing as a silly question. Anything that we can help out, if I can't help you, if I can't answer it, I'm getting somebody who, el who also is in this community to answer it. Peace. I see my man Rob Love in the building. Curry, Curry Kid, what up, brother? See you in the building. Joy, I see you. Let me see who else we got waiting to come in. If you're looking to get in this, please hit that um icon at the bottom where you can um uh request to be part of this live. Gene Alert, I see you, brother. Felix, what up? Who we got to wait for somebody to jump in? Oh! What's going on? What's going on, Big Sean? Jude, yeah. what up? What's good, brother? What's good, yo? Jude, it's always a pleasure. Like, like right now, I feel like I'm in the presence of royalty. For yeah. anybody who don't know, this is my brother, Jude Bernard. Long to, first and foremost, we, we frat brothers, but... Dude, you're killing it out there. Right now, I, like, you're killing it. Yo, you know what? I, I greatly appreciated the fact that you you hit me up earlier today and you were just like, yo, I see you moving. And I, and I had, and what did I respond? What, I, that, that, that you do it? <laughs> I, I said, I see you moving. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah this, this, absolutely. So it's, it, that's, that's the beauty of, like, the network and the power and stuff like that. You know, um, like, I really... I, I, I'm I'm really a believer of the network, right? The the mm -hmm. whole, you know, steel stop, steel sharp and steel, and just the fact that I have people like you, you know, people. The reason the reason that I could quote unquote um, be at the top of my game is because mm -hmm. I'm parallel and alongside, you know, people like you. Um, I'm I'm looking I'm looking down and I saw my boy um, Gene Alert is on here. You know what I'm saying? I see um, Gene, move up. You know what I'm saying? Dream awake now. You no, know, like we have cats out here and it's it's not it's not it's not singular. You know what I'm saying? So we all moving in the right direction and we all doing it and we all, you know, um we we all have our chance at the mic and we all pass the mic and we all are learning from each other. So that's dope, yo. Thank you. Yo, thank, so, so, thank you. so Jude, let me you know, for, for for my audience who don't know who you are, can you please and, and, and you're the perfect guest for this Power Move Maker Hour. Every Wednesday, it's a bunch of movers. This is our safe place where everybody can come in. If you're really trying to make them power moves out there, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're just somebody trying to move up in the company or move up in life, this is where we all congregate Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Can you please let them know who you are? And what you do? Yo, Jude Bernard, I'm a kid from Flatbush, Brooklyn, y'all. That's who I am. I'm a, I'm a, I'm I'm that dude. I'm I'm a son son of Haitian immigrants who came to America. Uh, my mom was a, worked in a hotel. My dad worked um worked as a cab driver. Um seven forty four Bedford Avenue. Um it was I think about at at some points it was like six of us in a two bedroom apartment. Um, and, and that's, that's my beginning, you know, that, you know, and, and I, I wasn't, um, I wasn't crazy about, you know, the hand that I was dealt. So like your man, like, like your man said before, you know, I had to play my hands the best way as possible. Um, very early on in life, you know, like I've, I've always, I've always wanted to be, I've always wanted to be more and do more and see more and stuff like that. And, um. I looked. I looked at what what my gifts and my talents were, and um, you know, at first I didn't recognize them. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know. So I was. I was so. I was in the street trying to trying trying to get it wherever I can, however I can, and it wasn't working out for me. You know, I I ended up. I ended up doing dumb shit. I ended up getting caught up. I ended up. You know. Um, came came real close a couple of times to losing my freedom and um that's kind of that's kind of when i the day that i kind of woke up and tried to figure out yo yo jude um you know like they really trying you know to be 
like in in a one bedroom apartment for the rest of you. How are you going to how are you going to to move further along? Right. So um that's when I was working. That's when I, I, I decided to get involved in real estate. Um, I decided to, um, you know, practice, practice restraint, practice um, delayed gratification, practice discipline, um, all, all these things that I focused on. And the result from that, uh, you know, the result of that is when I started to, that my life started to change, right? Um, and... On, on another note, real quick, like like cats who know me from behind, from back in the day, like they're real quick to tell me how like um, I've changed ever since I found success, right? Or, or quote unquote success. And the truth of the matter is I didn't change after I found success. Um, like I changed, then I became successful. Yeah. Ooh, that's a gym. You know what I'm saying? It's like um, my whole, like, you know, um, like the, like, like my mindset had to change. That's the first thing that had to change. Like, you know, that winning attitude that um, like, yo, calm, here's the thing. Calm is a bitch, but she's also very loving, right? So um, everybody always thinks about the, the bad side of karma, but um, karma is basically, you know, what you put into the universe is what's going to be pushed, you know, pushed back towards you, right? And when, when it stopped being all about me, that's when it started becoming all about me. If, <laughs> if you get what I'm saying? Yo, you are like like I ain't know you like like you had these words in you, brother. Like like you damn near poetic tonight. Uh, I love it. You know, like true story. Um true Hold on before because I wanna step like people don't understand you you're so humble and you're so gracious with your words. But I think people need to understand this real estate empire you built and why you are such an incredible power move maker. And then you can bring it back to whatever story you want to. Like, could you just share with us just in terms of your empire and where you're at now? Cause I'm so super proud of you. And there's people on this uh, live right now that aspire to be where you are in real estate. Where am I in real estate? I'm 23 years in the game. You know, 1997, October 31st, 1997, I caught my first joint. The goal, the goal of um, when I first started doing real estate was um, my goal was to make $500 a month. That was the goal. Like if I could make an extra $500 a month on top of what I was making at my job, I, I, I considered that a win. You know, slowly and slowly and slowly, transaction after transaction, um, you know, like, I don't want to detail, you know, I don't want to bore your, your, your peoples like with the details, but you know, um, it, it just, one day I woke up 23 years later and I was like, Oh snap, you know, I did a hundred thousand transactions over, over the last 23 years. And I'm sitting on, um, you know, I'm sitting on a nice, a nice chunk of change. I, like I currently own about 13, 13 brownstones. Um, I have, profit organization called the Brooklyn Bank where where I where I own the building. You know, I, I have an actual bank. You've been there, you know what I'm saying? Yep. You know, like you've been in the vault. <laughs> 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 you know, um and it's it's been a journey. But as I as I was saying before, you know, like it it, it it's never it's never like this. It never it's never straight up, right? Like I've had a lot of ups and downs. I've had I've had gambling, I've had bad decisions, I've had um I've had ego, I've had, had the recession, you know. Mm -hmm. Like uh I think it was like 2006, 2006 when my net worth was about 3 million dollars, right? And um like that was 3 million dollars in 2006 and that's like to me that was like a billion dollars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's that's like hood hood rich. You know, it's like I'm I'm, I'm flying to Miami. 
buying cars, I'm buying cribs, this, that, the other. Like, you know, that's that's the good old days when um, real estate, real estate and stocks and stuff like that. You was making a hundred grand, seventy five grand a month, you know, and it was literally more money than you could spend. So, so no matter how hard you try to spend it, you know, you you know, next month, next month there was another seventy five thousand dollar, hundred thousand dollar check. So um, I got caught up. I got caught up, and just like you know, what I'm saying, just like the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, you know. And it was, it was then I had to make the decision on if I was just gonna accept that, you know, like you know, accept the fact, that, yo, I had a good run, and, and now it's over, or am I gonna come back? You know, I chose the latter. But um, what I was saying in, in regards to like the way it worked out, right? Like for, from 2000, for, I got in the game in 1997. From 1997 to um, I'd say 2000, 2010, like with, with all the ups and downs, ups and downs between the gambling and, and the recession and, and making money here and losing money there and stuff like that. Like um, I, never, I never put people first, right? It's, it's, it, was always, it was always me first, right? And I don't know what it was. In 2010, in 2010, things were like really bad for me. You know, I was, um, I had lost, I had everything between the stock market and the real estate market of, of the recession. Um, I had started this business with my, with like my last 50 grand. It was called Law 676. It was a, a event space in the city. And I was, I was losing that because um, I had my paperwork together and I, you know, I just thought I was going to, you know, Brooklyn, the situation is just like, yo, I'm just going to open up. Like, I don't know about licenses, fire codes or nothing like that, or, or my neighbors or, or councilmen or anything like that. I'm just going to do that. So I got shut down real quick, but, um, before before I did that, uh, that's when earthquake in Haiti, right? Um, the, the major earthquake in Haiti, where um, all these people lost their lives and stuff like that. And I did a fundraiser, right? Um, my man, shout out to my boy Ezra Lamy, who who approached me. He was just like, "Yo, you have the space. Let's do this fundraiser." And in my mind, it's like I had my own problems, right? I had my own. Problems my own things going on and I didn't need this right now. But, you know, my and like, then I started hearing the stories about there and, 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 and like how, how bad the situation was. Right. So then I became hyped about this. Right. So we ended up um, raising like, I think not, not 15 grand or something like that. But, and and we sent it all between doctors with boy board, doctors without borders, the Red Cross and Yale Yale Haiti. We we gave all that dough away, and it felt so good, right? And I was going through a little bit of depression because, like I said, everything was everything had fell apart. This was the first time you know that I was feeling good, and I was feeling good, but it ain't have nothing to do with no nice car, it ain't to do with no money in the bank, and it had nothing to do with no no you know what I'm saying, no fine shorty I was dealing with. It 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 just came from a good place. Right? So um I have a very addictive personality and and I just wanted that feeling again. Right? So so that's kind of, so I, I'm so I, that's kind of um the start of my like, philanthropic efforts. Because that's when I'm like, yo, I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and I'm helping this, right? And um, at first, at first, I thought it was just coincidence, irony. But like, as I'm helping this person and helping that cause, it's just like, oh, and this real estate deal is falling into my lap. Oh, and this hair business fell into my lap. And oh, um, this you know, this cash from Airbnb started falling into my lap, right? The more that I did and the more people I, I helped, um, other people 
I would meet people while I'm helping somebody and they would change my life. Yo, can, can, can I say something, Jude? I, I love that you, because I was trying to piece where you're going with this story. And I got it. I put up a post. If it wasn't this week, it was last week. And it simply read, I'm blessed because I'm a blessing. And I read that. It's just that simple. That, that people don't understand that. Yeah. This thing is biblical. You call it karma. I call it you reap what you sow. You put good, you know, seeds out there to the world. You going to get them back. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be the next day. But I want everybody who's on this live right now. Look at this man. Look at him. He's flawed. He is admitting I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. He admits, I have, you know, struggled with gambling addiction. I have an addictive personality. I took a major hit during the greatest recession since the Great Depression. But this is the face of success. So I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you have been through. What your childhood look like? What your circumstances look like right now? If you change this, everything else changes. And in and, and the way you're present, presenting it so beautifully, I couldn't set it better. And I love it because it's coming from a person who has millions and millions and millions of dollars of real estate, owns the Brooklyn Bank, freaking... You know, people would look at you and think he's got something I don't have. He possesses something I don't possess. And I love the fact that you're showing I am flawed just like you, but that doesn't matter. No, we all we all have something. And it's just that we have to acknowledge what we have. You know, like um there there there's wealth, there's all kinds of wealth. There's 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 wealth and you know, there's financial wealth, there's family wealth. There's there's love wealth. There's your, there's you know what I'm saying. So it's just like, um, I think Con, um, Kanye had uh, what do you call it? Um, had had one time said, in a, in one of his rhymes, he was like, yeah, one of my boys showed me a picture of his crib. I mean, of his kids. So he went into his wallet, showed him a picture of his crib, and you know what I'm saying, something like that. And it's just like, yo, everybody has everybody has something, and and don't spend so much time looking at what what someone has where you you might be missing what you have. You know what I'm saying? We all have we all have a gift inside of us. We all have our blessings, and it's very important that we acknowledge them. And you know, at the at the end of the day, right? Um, I there are very few billionaires in this world. You know, um, and there are few billionaires, there are few people, there are few Michael Jordans, there are few Kobe's, there are few, you know what I'm saying, there are few Serena's, there are, there are few people that, um, that reach that pinnacle of, of, of success in their field, right? Like the, the life is about finding, finding that success in your thing. And in, you know, success to you might come and, and and providing for your family and having your and having your kids smile and and having a a good interaction a good interaction with with the person that you care about you know what i'm saying success success might be building a business success might be you know reaching a, a particular dollar amount you know what i'm saying but that's you you know what I'm saying? That's on you. You can't let nobody define your success. You know what I'm saying? You can't, because um, a lot, I, I don't know if you have ever saw this this post, right? Um, I had- and Dude, um, I, 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 I want to let a couple more people in. Okay. I, I apologize to even, even, even jump in here, but I like to try to keep it to an hour. So, so, so go ahead and tell us the story where you were about to go. I, I, I love the fact that you're sharing so many gems, but I want to get anybody in who has questions and all that other stuff. 
Well, I'm not even going to go into a little but the bottom line is um, you can't let, like, last year, I think it was, um, I, I went out and I and I bought, like, like $150,000 Range Rover, right? I couldn't find the parking for it. Um, it like, it was, I had all the, like, I like to get, go to Home Depot and, and get lumber and stuff like that. But now I got these leather seats that I can't put this stuff on. And I'm just like, why am I doing this? You know what I'm saying? And I took, I took it back like a week or two weeks, right? And it's like, I didn't want that car. Um, but it was just like society told me that's what I needed. You know what I'm saying? And so, so many times, so many times were, were like, like I'm, I'll never tell every, anybody out there, yo, you need, you need to become an entrepreneur. You need to do this and you need to be your own boss and you need to write a book or you, you know what I'm saying? If that's what you want to do, then do it. But you know, like, don't measure your success by, by somebody else's. Cause you, you know what I'm saying? It's two totally different things. You know, that's all. I don't want to hold you guys up too much. But um, Juice, stay, uh, man. I, I, I could talk to you all night. Like you <laughs> drop so many freaking gems, man. I hate to cut it short, but I do want to let other people into the conversation. Where can people find you? Where can they follow you at? Um, Mr. J Bernard, right here. Um, M R dot J U D E B E R N A R D. You know, or or hit me up, or, or hit up the Brooklyn Bank at the Brooklyn Bank. I'm there. Juice, thank you, brother. I Thank appreciate you. you. Stay, stay, stay in the building. I love to get stay in the building and encourage somebody else who who's trying to get to where you are. Oh man, and I'm trying. You know, I'm trying. I'm trying to get to where you are. Just smiling and happy. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, God is good, man. God yeah. is. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, and and, and then I will move on. Whoever's next, please hit the request button. But here's the deal, man. You just hit it out the park with that last point you made. And I put a post up earlier this week that said exactly what I'm about to tell you. I used to think the goal was to make millions. But as I got older, I now know impacting millions is how you create legacy. That's what it's all about. Shots, shots, shots. Be good, Jude. Speak My to you man. later, brother. Thank you. Shout out to my man, Jude Bernard, dropping so many crazy gems. Hit the request if y'all want to get in. This is the Power Move Maker Hour. This is where we come. We encourage each other, y'all. This is where we come. We ask our questions. We support one another. If you are a mover, please be in the building every 7 p.m. Wednesday night and share this. Share this with like-minded individuals. Movers hang out with movers. So all your friends should be in here Wednesday night. Let me see who else we got waiting to get in. I see my man professional in the building. Professional, what up? Yeah, yeah, what up? What up, what up? Yo, yo, who we got? Uh, my name is Joe Paul. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to say uh, I really appreciate what you do, and you're very uh, inspirational to a lot of young uh, entrepreneurs out there. And I caught your behind the records with my guy Rob Love, and I absolutely loved it. There was so many things that you said that literally is my mentality and how I preach to a lot of the people that I'm in connection with. So uh, just to introduce myself, uh, what's up? I'm I'm Joe Paul. I host the I'm Verified podcast. I've been in the music industry since about 1996. I was under a different name, went through a rebrand, went through a whole bunch of different shit, was in a legendary rap group, dealt with my ups and downs and struggles. And like a lot of people during this pandemic, I had to prove that I wasn't a one trick pony because in the music industry right now, it just doesn't feel the same releasing music like when all of us were outside. So I had mm -hmm. to think, what can I do to kind of keep myself relevant and keep myself busy from not going insane from everything that's going on between the, you know, racial and social division, and, you know, and one side, you know, pinning against each other and 300,000 people dead. So you have, to, you have to think, you know, okay, what can I put my energy into and really make pop? And 
with this new podcast that I started, you know, it was just an idea, you know, basically as a niche to, um, you know, to really highlight verified artists. And because I've been in the game for so long and I've never asked anybody for anything, I was like, let me utilize these relationships, how it move similar to like what, you know, you do. And let me leverage these, you know, very important people that have a, a deep story to tell. And let me share that to all of my followers all over the place. And, you know, and thank God, you know, knock on wood, it's doing extremely well. You know, we've only been operating for a couple of months. I've had some of the most legendary people on there. Like, uh, like I had Freeway Rick Ross on there. Uh, I had um, I had my man Capone from the legendary rap group CNN. I had DJ EFN from Drink Champs. I had Harry Spears, legendary comedian. So and I even had Rob Love do a, do a guest appearance on a... On, on one of them with uh, DJ Chubby Chubb, legendary. Um, so, and, and we're having a, the, the biggest thing is I'm having a freaking blast doing it. So I'm having fun doing what I love. I'm making a little bit of money. My YouTube is growing, you know, uh, I would say exponentially, and I couldn't be happier. So, you know, I just wanted to get on here and basically say that a lot of the things that you said on the Behind the Records interview hit literally like, boom, it was like, this dude's right on the money right there. So, yeah, but Joe Paul, first and foremost, it's good to put a face because um, you and I have been going back on the DM and all that stuff, and I see you always like my content. So it's it's good to meet you virtually, if anything. Likewise. So that's number one. Um, but you just said something that just, just struck a chord with me that I think is so dope. You said I'm having a freaking blast. And that's the part that people miss. If, you know, there are a million opportunities out there. There's real estate, it's stock market, it's this, it's that. Everybody, you can turn on, you know, your, your phone and hit Instagram or whatever. Everybody's selling you something. Exactly. You can become a real, a real estate mogul. You can become, but the bottom line is. But, uh, but does it generate this? Does it generate you a smile? Like it could generate you a paycheck, but at the end of the day, we really do have only one life to live. And you know, you need to, you need to enjoy the fruitfulness of your labor while you're doing it. You know, I, I worked like, you know, your first guest, I worked in corporate America for 10 years. I was a, I was a, a, a vice president for business relations for JP Morgan. And, and yeah, it was fun making money and, you know, but you know, my heart was in music and getting fired from there was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because, you know, and, you know, I'm going to, you know, use a quote that my man Rob Love says, I turned my passion into dollars because music is what I have a passion for. And the fact that I was able to utilize my music contacts into the into the podcast world. It's a freaking blessing in itself right there. Can, I mean, can, okay. I, can I ask you something? When you got fired, because there's a lot, we're in COVID right now. A lot of people lost their job. Did you realize the blessing in that moment? No. Or was that something that you came to learn? Can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, I came to, I mean, how I got fired was actually pretty, it, it, it's pretty interesting. And, and I know that, you know, you're coming up on the hour time slot and I'd like to give somebody else some time. So in the interest of saving time, I'll try to speed through it. I was moonlighting in the music industry while I was working at the bank. I had an opportunity to open up for Afrojack and Cascade at the MGM in Las Vegas for July 4th. Coincidentally, that weekend that I was uh, that I was supposed to perform was what's called President's Club, where the top performers in the in, uh, out of the whole bank go and they they party and they celebrate how how great they are. So they saw me on a billboard out there. Two weeks later, I get fired because they said that they don't want uh, an executive moonlighting in the the drug culture. So and so. Wait, wait, to get back to your question. I thought it was the worst curse in the world in the moment because here I'm making over $100,000 a year. I have full benefits. You know, my parents looking at, looking at, you know, me being a former street kid, you know, and being, you know, with all the gangster rapper hustlers and I'm working at the bank, but now I'm fired. So, you know, what do I do? You know, unemployment, you know, making $1,400 a month from making five, five to seven grand a month is a pretty penny, especially if you mm -hmm. live out of your means. So I thought, in that moment was the worst thing possible. And I, I you know, and I got, um, 
I got like kind of vengeful and I wanted to strike back at the bank. And I used all my energy because I thought I was unjustly fired to, to bring a case <coughs> to the bank. But in reality, all of those efforts and all of those resources were so misguided because if I just accepted my fate and realized that this was meant to be, I could have got off to a better start even quicker, not realizing that that was really the biggest blessing in the world. Because as much as I'm making money, I wasn't happy you know, at all. I was freaking miserable. I hate I mean, as much as I like hard work, I hated having to wake up at 6.30 in the morning and put on my costume or my suit, you know, and go and meet with business professionals that have more money than I do. And I have to guide them on what to do with their business when I want to be that business owner. I want to be that is making those moves. I want to have to consult with the guy at the bank, but I'll tell him what to do because I already know what to do. Now, Joe Paul, man, thanks for dropping. You know, you 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 just said so many encouraging words, and I I, I love that you just shared this story because somebody right now is collecting unemployment. Somebody right now is looking at the fact that they were let go, but they're forgetting that when they had that job day to day, they couldn't stand it, and because of that. They can't see the blessing in the fact that God finally relieved them of this situation and they can go and focus on what they really want to do. So thanks for sharing. There's a lot of movers in this community, a lot of people on the live that's going to benefit from your journey. So I appreciate you sharing it with us, Joe Paul. Where can I, people I, find you at? You can find me at I am Joe Paul on Instagram. I don't really use any of the other platforms. And lastly, I just wanted to say thank you because you're a true legend in the game and your tenure and contribution in the music industry as a whole is literally one of the foundation blocks of hip hop as we know it today. So thank you for everything you do and especially for allowing people like me to come on your platform and share my story. Salute, my brother. Thank you so much. Happy salute, happy. salute. Be good. All right, y'all, we coming up on this hour. If we got anybody else who wants to drop in, share some information, ask a question, now's your time. I'm going to close us out in the next few minutes if nobody else drops in. Let me see if anybody's waiting. Uh, okay, don't look like anybody's waiting right now. But, um, guys, please, let's, let's support one another. Th th this ain't that hard. It don't hurt to support one another. It don't hurt to share information. It doesn't hurt to be that voice of, of inspiration and advice, especially now we are in a very, very devastating time. And I just want everybody to please, please, please um, look at this as a new start. Stop looking at this glass half empty because I can tell you it really is half full like if you just change your vernacular if you change your perspective there's so much opportunity and you know I, I i share this with you guys every day i mean every time i get on this live everybody knows me for being a marketing genius and you see that little i'm gonna pat myself on the back feel like i'm bragging but everybody know me for being this marketing guy everybody know me for the music industry but what i'm doing now it is it, 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 so much more rewarding than anything else I've ever done. And if I can do this for the rest of my life and this be my legacy, I die a happy man. So I catch y'all on all on Monday night. Please go ahead if you haven't and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Power Move Makers YouTube channel. Please go ahead and, um, you know, I'm seeing people in the comments right now. I can't even read these comments. They're going by. So, so just follow one another. If any of the interviews you guys have missed, you can go ahead and catch it on iTunes. You can catch it on Spotify or any of the streaming platforms. All right, y'all. Next week, we are now at one hour exactly. And um, we're going to sign off. Keep making power moves. I love y'all. And, you know, let's just keep lifting each other up. One love.